Hello, these are capos. This is an old Dunlop capo and this is an old Hamilton capo. Looks like an instrument of torture, doesn't it? I spend an inordinate amount of time on forums, uh, most of them guitar related. And um, occasionally they gave me an idea for another video and uh, a recent one was, which capo is the best for staying in tune? Um, what followed, of course, was a recommendation by many of their particular choice of capos. And I don't think there's ever been such an enormous choice of capos available. Um, I am. This is not me following that lead. I'm not going to recommend a capo. I'll say right now that I have used and prefer to stay with my simple Shub lever capos, the C1, and that's a 12 string, I'm going to talk about that in a moment, um, but it's a personal choice. Um, capos tend to fall into two categories and then two subcategories. Uh, generally speaking, they're a spring tensioned, like for instance the Kaiser capo. Uh, uh, or they're screw tensioned, very much like this. Uh, they can also be the stirrup type, which is um, effectively a semicircle with the bar across with tensioning at the back, uh, which many people prefer, um, especially if they like to keep their capo above the nut here so they can whip it on and off and things like that. I, I don't have that issue myself. Um, or the claw style, um, and I wish I'd bought my Kaiser Capo, it's a typical um, example, and that's a thing that sort of clinches in that way. Um, I'm calling it claw style for want of a better description. Um, the spring tensions, like the Kaiser, are fine, but they have to put an equal tension on the high skin and the, and the lowest string, and um, the tension will possibly be increased as the depth of the neck profile goes up, um, depending on whether it does or not. Uh, but uh, the screw tension, uh, either the stirrup type or the uh, set screw type, does have the facility to be slightly adjusted as one goes up and down. I prefer the lever type, um, and hence my basic shove capos. I have one for each of my flat top guitars, and um, it's adjusted to fit for each of them. And I've just used the wrong one, that was interesting. So this one will slot on beautifully easily. And there we go. Um, so here's a scenario something that I've experienced a number of times. It's winter, the weather's freezing, humidity is low in your nice warm house. You and your guitar go from that nice warm and possibly low humidity house um, into a freezing car and you drive X number of miles to your gig. By the time you arrive, you are probably fairly warm, but the guitar in its case in the boot stroke trunk is cold. You walk in to the club and it, there's a crowd there. Lots of hot, humid bodies. Someone meets you and they say, oh, fine, um, if you'd like to go into uh, the green room or back room or whatever, uh, you can get ready and tune up. We'll be calling you in a while. And um, so you go in and in my experience, those green rooms, those changing rooms, those broom closets, are always unheated, incredibly cold, and often damp. Um, in one place, I had to step over the beer barrels in order to find somewhere to put my guitar case. Um, and so um, you try your best to tune up. The guitar has got hot and cold and damp and, um, and dry. And so you tune up uh, and um, 
everything is fine and then someone comes out and gives you your five minute call so you check your tuning again you've got everything you need to make and you you wait and then you go through usually a really narrow corridor from the green room to the stage and um, and while you're going through there someone comes through with a double bass and a trombone or a you know a handful of guitars or mic stands the worst things um, and and you squeeze past each other and you get out and you wait in the wings and so you're ready yes you checked up yeah that's fine yeah okay and then the MC comes on and says well just before Andrew um, uh, comes on to entertain us I'm sure he'll be as good as he was last time or something like that oh dear and he said just a few notices and he says so next week we've got such and such and such now for Easter we're doing this and my mother-in-law's not been very well and blah 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 and 20 minutes goes past and you're in a cold corridor and you're going to be standing in front of the lights on the stage and things and then all of a sudden he says, and now Andrew Perry, oh, right. So you, you, you go on and things have changed. So you hit the first chord, it's out of tune. So you chat, hello everybody, yes, well a funny thing happened to me as I was uh, driving here tonight and blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is my first song. Da, 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 da. And you go into your first song. And then you stop and, hopefully, they applaud. That's your important moment. While they applaud, you check your tuning. Maybe even fit a capo on for your next number. Is it sharp? Is it flat? But you've got a limited amount of time. The amount of time of applause and your intro for the next song is your tuning time. So you should check the tuning between each number. You should check the tuning every time you use or move a capo. Let's talk about tuning. Why are guitars always out of tune? Well, A, they're organic when they're wooden and wood moves but also the strings are made of metals and metals shrink contract when they're cold and they expand when they're warm not a lot but enough to notice um, consider what our fingers and our capos do to strings so if you tune up to an open string that says it's in perfect E and then you make a G chord that's showing just a little tiny bit sharp now then why is that because a fret's got in the way and the fret, this is a nice new guitar, the fret's nice and high and I am a heavy handed bloke and I can push that from just in tune to a little bit sharp, same with bass. I can push that about five cents out of tune. Same thing with a capo. I put a capo on here and I can see the bend in the string there. So you're stretching the string, if such a thing can be done, over the, the fret, down onto the fret board or close to it. And so it's already a little bit sharp and then you're making it even sharper than that. So yeah, guitars are always going to be out of tune. Allow me to suggest how I tune my guitars. I don't tune to open strings, or not all of them. I play most of my songs using a C shape as my first chord, or my G shape as my first chord, but I use a capo to play in any key. 
there's my C shape E, there's my G shape B, etc. You, you, I'm sure you understand that process. So, how do I start? Well, first of all, I don't expect things to be in tune there and all the way up the fretboard, however good your guitar and the fretting on it is. Frets always have a different height and they vary. So this is what I do. I will tune that note to a G. And this has just changed in the last 10 minutes while the temperature has varied in this little conservatory. And I'll change this to the B on the A string. That's okay. I'll tune the D. I'll tune the D open. And the G open. I'll tune the, the B string to a D there. I found that the most problematic tuning is if you tune everything to the nut and then you press down a C, you can sharpen that C, which is your root note, very easily. So I, if I do get that one right, then the C is going to be right. Now, of course, if your guitar is warm, uh, uh, if your guitar is cold, which is more likely because I live in the UK, um, it's going to be a little bit sharp and so you have to tune down. It's always good practice to tune up. That means if it's a bit sharp, tune it down and then tune it up to the note. Now it's not always the most practical. It's good practice and it was absolutely necessary once upon a time when tuners had slack in them and things like that or a lot of wear. These are brand new tuners on a virtually new guitar and so I confess that sometimes I will change down but tuning up does help to equalise the tension on the string between the tuner and the nut, the nut and your capo, the capo and your finger and the finger to the saddle. So you know they're all possibilities for things, for the, for the strings to settle a little bit. Um, so where are we now? Um, so you should check the tuning every chance you get. Don't make a song and dance out of it. Um, keep the audience occupied while you're doing it. Get into a methodology. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, of course, if you're a big star, someone wearing a black t-shirt and jeans and keys on their belt will come out and hand you another guitar that's perfectly tuned, but we're not there. I am a masochist. When I play, I like to take two guitars, including a 12-string. Yes, a 12-string. Uh, difficult to tune up at the best of times when they're cold and they're sharp to tune all of them down and up. This guitar was built in the 60s and uh, I believe so were these tuners. I still need to use a caper. I tune down to D by the way, because it, it was a different dynamic to the, uh, to the six string. But I will still need to use a capo sometimes. Uh, I should say, does it sound in tune at the moment? put the tuner on just to make sure because it's probably 10 minutes since I tuned it. Nice F sharp. Oh. This is the least reliable of my guitars but I do so like it. Open, open, a little bit sharp, got cold, fine, a little bit sharp. Down here it's the wound strings that tend to go out of tune more. As we get up into the first, second and third, it's the unwound.
most exciting video, watching someone tune up a 12 string guitar, isn't it? And I'm not going to do this again, because I'm going to get this in tune. Beautiful. So, that's fine. <laughs> and now I'm just for dramatic purposes, I'm going to put that there to play in A because it's tuned down to D. Fine. Oh, about 10 cents sharp. So, there, I'm really being masochistic um, and I'm not going to put you through the agony of watching me tune this up, but it has to be done. It has to be done. So, maybe. You grab a time or you work out your repertoire so that you've got time, maybe if you're gonna do this song in A on this, you know, you do it after the interval or after a break so you can be prepared for it. So in answer to the original question, I would say, I don't believe that it is reasonable to expect any capo to always enable you to play in tune because it cannot compensate for the variables of your string gauge, the action of that guitar, the height of your frets, the pressure that you put on with your fingers to fret, and variable temperatures. Find the capo that is best for you, for your hands, for your changing, your budget. Um, uh, I noticed that some of the recommendations in that thing went from a £10 capo to a £170 capo. Fine. I won't stint on buying expensive picks and things like that. And I'll buy a better capo if I really believe it's going to be better than this. But they all do the same job. Uh, so I'm I'm sticking with my shabs. So we need, when we're playing, to understand these variables that these guitar strings have to go through. And we need to anticipate the problems we're going to have. And we need to compensate for that. That's just part of being a guitarist. So um, there we go. Um, I just thought that that might be helpful. And so... Um, Especially if you've got an old 1960s 12 string. <laughs> when they're in tune, they're great, they're wonderful, but... Um... Just imagine in the days when they used to play this, when there was no such thing as this. Just a tuning fork, if they were lucky, or a pitch pipe, or the nearest piano. There we go. Anyway. If you have been, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, um, since the first lockdown last year, 2020, um, I've been asked if I would give some lessons to people over Zoom. And I was a little bit concerned about that, not being, well, being a technophobe, I would say, but it worked out very well. And um, I got quite busy, uh, and that's been great fun, and I've learnt a lot how to teach using Zoom and um, found that it's actually a little less intimidating than if you're actually face to face in the same room. Uh, so it does have its advantages. I've now got some vacancies. So if you would be interested in discussing having some lesson, a lesson or lessons with me, um, then uh, please get in touch. My email address can be found on the bottom half of my about page of my Silly Mustache channel, um, and I might even put it in the, in the details below. So, anyway, if you have been, thanks for watching. Bye.